Hey guys, so if you follow me on Instagram, you probably already know that I've recently been doing some shopping at Sephora. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, I'll have my username in the down bar below if you're interested in checking it out. I'm always on Instagram. My username is just Sarah Rihanna, just the same as here on YouTube. Yeah, this is technically a collective haul. Most of it was made in one big purchase, but the rest of it was kind of spread out over the past few weeks or so. I've got my huge Sephora bag here on my lap, and I have a ton of exciting stuff to show you guys. And I know this video is already going to be super long, so I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Three words. Ambient lighting blushes. Oh my gosh, you guys. I seriously, okay, I went a little bit crazy with the blushes. I just couldn't resist. I'm so addicted to my ambient lighting powders. And I actually ended up buying five of these. So there's only one of them that I didn't get. And if you're not familiar with the ambient blushes, they're basically a new product that Hourglass has come out with. And they are a blush that's just infused with all of their regular ambient lighting powders that they have. So all of the names include whatever ambient lighting powder that the blushes are mixed with. So I bought Mood Exposure. This one's just a really gorgeous kind of plummy bronze. And then I have Diffused Heat, which is actually the one I'm wearing today. So far, out of the ones I've tried, this one is my favorite. And it is just a gorgeous, bright kind of poppy brick red color. From swatching them, I noticed that this is the most shimmery out of the six of them. And this one is Dim Infusion. It's just a really soft, subtle coral shade. This one's definitely the most subtle of the blushes. And this one is Ethereal Glow. This one's just a really cool toned baby pink. It's the only cool toned blush out of the six of them. And it's super light, I don't know if you can see that, but if you have fair skin like me, this is going to be a great blush, but if you have darker skin, it's going to end up looking kind of ashy. And last but not least, I bought Radiant Magenta. This one's just a really gorgeous hot pink fuchsia kind of color. I figured this one would be beautiful in the summer with like some bronzer. If you're actually physically capable of getting a tan, unlike me, then it would be gorgeous. And the only one I didn't buy was Luminous Flush, I believe, and it was actually quite similar to this one. The only difference to me really when I swatched them was that one was a little bit less kind of like glow it almost seemed kind of matte when I swatch it, so I decided to pass on that one. But I've been loving these. I really, really recommend checking these out. And the next thing I got is just another bottle of my Philosophy Purity Made Simple Cleanser. I don't have too much to say about this product. It's just really gentle, non-stripping. I will basically forever repurchase this and go back to it when my skin is just freaking out. And then actually a few days before I went shopping, I got a sample of a new cleanser, and I just instantly fell in love with it. And it is the Clarins One Step Gentle Exfoliating Cleanser with Orange Extract. It just comes in a little clear tube like this which is really awesome so that means you can see exactly how much product you have left. Yeah this cleanser just has these really small micro beads in it just to really gently exfoliate. It's gentle enough for everyday use and also to use with my Clarisonic. Sorry I just had to go switch on the light because I was filming with natural light and the sun just went behind a cloud so, so I apologize if that last clip was getting a little bit dark. Yeah like I was saying this is just a really gentle cleanser. I have super sensitive skin and my skin tends to kind of freak out when I exfoliate. I'm loving that this has been working so well for me. It really seems to brighten up my skin and just give me a really nice smooth surface to apply my foundation on. This is actually the reason I didn't buy a bigger bottle of the Purity, just because I do plan on kind of alternating between these two regularly, so I thought it'd be kind of unnecessary. And I also bought a couple more skincare things. The next one is the Caudalie Grape Water. I just bought this because I've been looking for a more hydrating product that I can use as a toner at nighttime. I usually use the Lush Tea Tree Water, but that's more for like controlling oil and stuff like that. It just says this is supposed to soothe and moisturize and it is suitable for sensitive skin. It's definitely helped to reduce any like redness on my skin. It just sprays out in a really fine mist and it's super refreshing. And the last skincare thing I bought is just these First Aid Beauty Facial Radiance Pads. I've been hearing a lot of people talking about these lately. Naturally, I was intrigued. I get a lot of like little clogged pores on my chin. Not blackheads, but just those little like white kind of bumps that aren't really breakouts. They're still super annoying. I'm not totally sure exactly how to pronounce what they're actually called, but I'll have it written right here. Yeah, I basically read that glycolic acid is kind of the best thing that you can use to treat those little bumps. And these contain a bit of glycolic acid. This whole line is kind of geared towards more sensitive skin. That's kind of First Aid Beauty's thing. Now the glycolic acid can be a little bit intense and a little bit irritating. So far I haven't had any problem with these. I will say though that they smell really weird. <laughs> I don't know. Sensitive to scent and you're thinking about trying these. If you get a chance, I definitely recommend smelling them first because the smell is kind of funky. But I'll keep you guys posted on how they work. Now moving on to some nail polishes. The first one I bought is actually my first Marc Jacobs beauty purchase. And it is the nail polish in Le Charm. Just looks like this. I have it on my nails today. I basically, I've just been looking for a really nice rose gold nail polish and it actually seems to be lasting fairly well on my nails. I painted them a couple days ago now and they haven't chipped at all so far which is really impressive. I'm kind of biased though because seriously my nails chip so fast. Whenever I hear anyone say like oh yeah I've been wearing this nail polish for like a week and it hasn't chipped at all I'm just like I'm like, what do you do for that whole week? Do you just like lie in bed and not move? I don't know, I'm pretty impressed with this. And next I just bought two Sephora Formula X nail polishes. 
The first one is called Over the Top and I believe it is from their kind of spring collection. It's a really unique nail polish. I've never seen anything quite like it. Kind of somewhere in between like a mint and a neon green. It's really pretty. The second one is called Moonwalk and it's one of their like celestial finish nail polishes. So it's a really opaque kind of platinum silver glitter. That one's really pretty too. Okay, so this next thing is a really random purchase. It wasn't for me. It was actually part of my boyfriend's Valentine's Day gift. That is the Jack Black Beard Lube Conditioning Shave with Jojoba and eucalyptus. I bought him the Jack Black lip balm for Christmas so I figured why not get him something else from the Jack Black line. The name was kind of funny and cheeky and I thought it might encourage him to shave. He used it and he seemed to like it so that's great. So I had been kind of eyeing this palette for a while. That is the Tarte CC Matte Be Magnificent palette. It's part of their whole new like colored clay line that's what the CC stands for. But oh my gosh you guys can we just take a second to appreciate this packaging. It's so friggin pretty. Tarte gets an A plus on this collection's packaging. It reminds me of like an amethyst. I actually have a little amethyst, um, I don't know, what are they called? Just like a little chunk of amethyst on my bed back there. The actual palette is beautiful as well. It comes with eight different eyeshadows. Two of them are kind of meant to be like eyeliner shades. And then one of their Amazonian clay blushes as well. The entire palette is totally matte. I am a huge fan of a full matte eye. I think it's totally underrated. But I also knew this would be the perfect palette to reach for if I needed a good like crease color or brow bone highlight. And to be honest, I didn't even swatch any of these eyeshadows or anything before I bought it. I just knew it was going to be great. The shades are just so buttery and smooth and easy to blend. I'm absolutely in love. I've actually been reaching for this palette more than my Naked 3 palette. Only downside is that instead of having the names written on the back of the palette, it comes with one of these stupid kind of plastic inserts. Which, let's face it, it's just gonna get lost. Yeah, other than that, no complaints about this palette. Okay, so NARS Orgasm Blush is one of my favorite blushes of all time, and I actually ran out of it quite a while ago. I'm not even sure how I finished the entire thing. If you own any NARS blushes, you know that that's quite the feat. I have other NARS blushes that I've literally worn every day for months on end and I'm like not even close to hitting pan on them. I ran out of it and I've been missing it for quite a while now so I knew I wanted to buy the new one. I never tried Laguna Bronzer so my original plan was to get one of their little duos that they always sell at Sephora but they had just gotten this NARS Narcissist Cheat Kit in stock. You get Orgasm in the center, Laguna Bronzer and then you also get one of their highlights which is called Devotee. I'm really happy to have this blush back especially with the warmer months approaching because it is one of my favorites in spring and summer. This little kit also came came with a mini travel size blush brush. I'll admit I'm always kind of skeptical when any kind of like makeup product comes with its own brush because I just never expect the quality to be that great. I'm sorry for underestimating you Nars, this brush is actually really nice and it'll be really handy for traveling. And then I bought the Tarte Amazonian Clay Full Coverage Airbrush Foundation. This has been out for a little while and I've always been kind of curious about it. But then I watched Essie Button's video on it. She just made it sound just so good and so appealing. It's just a mineral foundation. It comes in Tarte's standard like bamboo packaging. It has this little kind of like net inside. It also has this little stopper in the lid which is really nice. That's one of the most annoying things about loose powders and mineral makeup. It just kind of like flies everywhere. I wanted to get the Air Buki brush too that Tarte makes. It's their brush that they make specifically for this foundation. But they are sold out. And I don't really have like any other like really dense kabuki brush. So I haven't tried this out on its own. I've just been using it as a setting powder for other foundations. The coverage does seem pretty good. I won't fully know about like the full coverage claim until I do try it on its own though. But I just bought the shade Fair Honey. It says fair skin with peach undertones and it seems to be a really good match. It makes me really happy. I'm super fair and it's often hard to find foundations that aren't too dark for me. I know that's pretty sad but it's true. And it kind of makes me intrigued about parts other foundations. So if you've tried any of them definitely let me know in the comments below what you think. You actually swatch this on your finger. It does appear to have quite a bit of shimmer in it, but once you put it on the skin, it's not like obnoxious disco ball face. It gives like a really nice natural finish and a nice kind of glow. I'm really impressed with that product. And I've been desperately in need of a new black liquid liner for quite some time now, so I decided on the Kat Von D Tattoo Liner. It just has a little brush tip liner like that, really easy to use. This is a good eyeliner, I definitely will use it. The thing I have noticed, I did winged eyeliner the other day, and it was kind of hard to get like one really like smooth fluid line. I kind of had to like keep shaking it in between and kind of like draw a couple lines on my hand just to kind of keep the product flowing smoothly I guess but it is a good liner it really stays put it doesn't like smudge or do anything weird throughout the day so all in all I am pretty happy with this and then I bought my first Urban Decay lipstick. I just bought it in the shade Native. And basically, I've been on the hunt for the perfect kind of like pinky nude lipstick for quite some time now. I have really pigmented lips, so if I try and go for like lighter or more nude lipsticks, they can end up looking kind of wonky just because my natural lip color shows through. 
but this one is super pigmented and opaque. I don't have any issues with it looking weird or anything. Next, I bought the Too Faced Shadow Insurance Glitter Glue. And I actually bought this with my Naked 3 palette in mind, just for the more shimmery shades that don't tend to have the best color payoff. Ones like Dust and Buzz and Trick, I believe that's the three in there that I'm thinking of. This is basically just a really sticky base. It's meant to prevent fallout if you're using glitters or any kind of shimmery shades. I figured this would just be a great kind of staple addition to my collection. So my next product is by Too Faced. So let me say, Too Too Faced Pop It Don't Peach Blush was and still is one of my favorite blushes of all time. I'm seriously so upset with them for discontinuing it. I don't know what it is about that blush. It's just it's just perfect. I'm clearly still not over the fact that they discontinued it. It was quite a while ago now. I'll forever be mad at myself for not buying like six of them before they were gone. Because now I've majorly hit pan on mine and I want to use it all the time but I'm like no I can't. Once it's gone it's gone forever. I finally decided that I was ready to venture out into Too Faced new blush line. So I bought their Sweetheart Perfect Flush blush in the shade Something About Berry. This packaging is super adorable. Kind of makes me want to forgive Too Faced but I'm just just not sure if I'm ready yet. <laughs> actual blush just looks like this. It has three different stripes in it. You could use them individually if you want. I prefer to just kind of like swirl them all together. They're all basically just different shades of pink. The top one is more kind of like a mauvey pink. The center is a peachy pink and then the bottom stripe is just a true hot pink. This blush is super loaded with shimmer which I personally love in a blush. It gives such a nice glow to the skin. It's just gorgeous. Might eventually check out some of their other sweetheart blushes too. So the next thing is a hair product by the brand Living Proof. I actually originally tried this in the little Living Proof set that Sephora had on Black Friday. came with four different products and this is the one that stood out to me the most. It is the Full Thickening Cream. It says body boosting, volume creating, naturally moving. I think that's pretty straightforward. It does just make your hair feel a lot thicker and fuller and healthier. I squeeze about a dime size amount of this into my hair when it's still damp. It just makes my hair really sleek and shiny and nice and I love it. And then I decided to buy the Anastasia Tinted Brow Gel. Bought it in Auburn. No, it never translates too well on video or in pictures or anything but I do have quite a bit of red to my hair. Well, maybe you can tell. And of course everyone always raves about Anastasia's brow products and the only thing I've ever tried is their clear brow gel. I've been liking this. I want to try out their brow duo and also their dip brow pomade as well. I've been hearing so much about that lately. It seems really awesome. If you've tried that let me know too. The last thing I bought was the Beauty Blender Blender Cleanser Solid. What is this even called? It just says solid. <laughs> Solid by Beauty Blender. I recently started using my Beauty Blender again because I like it for full coverage foundations just to kind of give a more natural look. My foundation from looking like cakey or I have a ton of makeup on. I've been super obsessed with this. It just looks like this. It's just like a white little like block of soap in here basically. It has like a really nice light clean herbal smell. I've been loving this so much. I'm gonna talk about it too much now because I probably am going to mention it in my February favorites. I'm using it to clean my Beauty Blender and all of my brushes as well and I've noticed such a difference. It seriously makes brushes that I've had for years feel brand new. To me this is definitely worth the money. It is a little bit pricier for a brush cleaner. I definitely recommend it. And last but not least I decided to get a 500 point perk from Sephora and that is the fresh skincare 500 point perk that they currently have. I've had a couple samples of products from this line recently. I haven't actually bought anything like full size from them yet. I do plan to in the future though so I figured why not try a couple more products. And the first thing it comes with is their famous soy face cleanser. It says for all skin types, rich in amino acids, gently cleanses face and eyes. And I'm actually going to my family's place in the mountains in a couple weeks from now so this is going to be perfect. I'm going to save it for that trip. And then it comes with a little baby size of their sea berry moisturizing face oil. It's a face oil that is formulated with sea buckthorn oil which I've heard good things about. I can add this to my huge collection of mini face oils now. And the final thing it comes with is a really good size of their Lotus Youth Preserve face cream. It comes in a really nice nice little glass jar just like the rest of Fresh's like creams and masks and stuff like that. So yeah I guess that kind of wraps up my haul. If you guys actually stuck around for this long and finished this video thank you guys so much for watching. I had so much to say about all of these products and I kind of tried to limit it so definitely if you have any other questions about the products things that I didn't address in the video definitely comment down below or comment on one of my Instagram pictures. I'm always more than happy to respond to your guys comments and talk to you about products and anything like that. If you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up. So don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already. Really appreciate all of my subscribers. I'm really close to 200 now so I'm really excited. Yeah once again thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!